You must follow all instructions and procedures found in the OPW installation manual for this product. All OPW automatic tank gauge systems and components must be installed in accordance with the National Electric Code in FPA 30 and 70, and all local codes. All precautions must be taken to follow OSHA guidelines for working safely in a potentially dangerous environment. This is Pete Neal, the ATG product manager for OPW FMS. I'd like to talk to you about the installation of the Nano console. The first thing I'd like to go over is the actual console itself. When you first get the console and you take it out of the box, the first thing you want to do is figure out where you're going to mount the unit. So what you want to do is find a place on the wall that doesn't have anything on the top or on the bottom. Uh, take your Nano and literally try to figure out the best location to mount the Nano so that you have access to the COM ports on the, the bottom of the unit. Uh, there, there are uh, electrical knockouts on top and bottom of the intrinsically safe side as well as the power uh, side of the, the unit. When we open up the console, what you will notice is that there are screws on both sides of the console that help keep the, the lid on. All we're going to do is take the screws out Be sure to keep them in a place that you're not going to lose them. Now once the, the screws are out, the, the lid is still locked on the console with uh, tabs that are on the inside of the console. There's two release holes on each side. Literally just take a small screwdriver, press them on the inside, and you will feel the lid release from the nano box and you can take the lid completely off. Now as we were saying, you can see the inside of the box. This is your probe side. So this is starting from the bottom, uh, channel one, two, three, and four. Your external inputs, RS422 and 485. Your IS ground, what you have is your earth ground, your neutral, and either single phase 120 or 220. So if you're looking at the connector from top to bottom, Normally closed relay, normally open relay, and then the common. And then your second relay, normally closed, normally open, and then your common. Now when you're mounting the box, you have two mounting lugs at the top, as well as a center mounting lug on the bottom. So what we really want to do is bring the nano box to the wall. Make sure that it's level. Go ahead and take a pin and mark your mounting holes and just drill and tap either putting it in directly into the concrete or actually using internal mollies to hold the screw. When we look at mounting the nano to the wall, the easiest thing to do is go ahead and remove the four screws and literally just take the, the nano main board completely out and set it somewhere on a static free environment. And what you want to do is, depending on what direction you're going to have your probe wires and your electrical wires coming from, you either take the knockouts off the bottom or off the top. The easiest way once the main board is completely taken out of the box, just go ahead and take a small tip screwdriver, put it in the groove, and take a simple hammer and just hit the knockout and it'll pop right out. One thing you have to consider when you're mounting the nano on the wall is you have to watch the ports that are on the bottom. You have your ethernet port, your USB ports, the Lopezio horn, and your serial connector. So you definitely don't want to mount the box too close to something that you're going to have to connect either Ethernet serial or USB key to the bottom of the box. Now that you have the console mounted to the wall, now you can start running your electrical conduits to the power side and to the intrinsically safe side of the console. Now that we have our conduits installed, we went ahead and pulled our electrical wires and ran our probe and sensor wires to the intrinsically safe side of the console. Now it's just a matter of wiring them up according to the instructions in the manual. When we're wiring up the, the nano console, you'll see that there's a, I've installed a, an IS ground. Uh, you really need to run a separate earth ground and an IS ground uh, back to a bonded neutral uh, back to the electrical panel. The reason being is that I need a, a grounding source so that if there's something that is shorted in the field, I cannot and will not send out any type of high voltage down a probe or down a sensor wire due to the intrinsic safe value uh, of the barrier. When you're wiring up the electrical, you can actually remove the connector and go ahead and then wire it in the connector, and that way it'd be easier to install 
back into the console. One of the things you want to remember when you're wiring up the electrical is when you're stripping the wire back, when you slip it into the connector, you want to make sure that no exposed wires or wire threads are actually going from one terminal block to the other. One, you can short out the, the high voltage, but on the same side, when you're looking at the intrinsically safe side, you don't want any stray wires going from one connector to the next because you can actually short out the barrier or damage one of the devices connected to it, whether it be a probe or a sensor. Now that you have all your electrical and your intrinsic safe wires connected to the barriers and your terminal blocks, you can go ahead and hook up your peripheral devices such as your Ethernet connections, um, RS-232 connections, or even um, relay controls. Now that you have the nano mounted, you can go ahead and replace the cover. When you're replacing the cover, you'll feel it snap into its locks. And don't forget to reinsert the screws into the side of the nano console to keep people from tampering with the box. Now that you've finished the installation, you can go to the breaker and power it up.